Welcome to Fractal Aerodynamics. This is a video podcast discussing a new approach describing fluid dynamics. My name is Felix Schaller and I am the host of this channel. Before you watch this episode, I recommend you to start with the introducing chapter, who gives a comprehensive overview over the content of this channel. In this first chapter, we'll have a closer look on current flight theories and the problem that still remains when using these theories to describe lift. Subsequently, we will introduce a model that can describe the phenomenon with all known effects, including impulse change, downwash, optimal wing shapes, flow attachment and stall. So what keep plane, keeps planes in the air? We still have to accept that physics has no clear answer for that yet. We will have now a look on current flight physics to start unraveling the mystery of aerodynamic lift, leading to a final solution you might not expect. It's not obvious that every object creates lift. Most objects don't, and it has less to do with weight, but rather shape. In later chapters we will also see that a certain flexibility and the ability to react on the surrounding airstream also plays a role. The major goal for lift is that the air has to attach on the object surface and gets deflected. This attachment on the air surface is very sensitive and fragile. Lots of boundary conditions must meet. As soon the conditions no longer occur, the stream detaches and turbulence is created. Since the beginning of light, we aim to describe the physics behind it. So far, there are several theories explaining the phenomenon of lift. The most popular explanation is arguing with the laws of Bernoulli. Others' explanations are based on Newton's principles, and others do it by the Magnus effect or the Zhukovsky condition. New theories from the 21st century by Hoffmann, Johnson and Johnson see lift happening due to the 3D detachment of the air on the trailing edge. So how is lift commonly described? We already heard it with the Bernoulli principle. Bernoulli describes a relation in the fluid between speed and pressure. It's simply spoken a simple version of the energy conservation law. And indeed the relations almost match until the point of lowest pressure. Then the flow creates a laminar separation bubbles and become unpredictable. Though a relation of pressure and speed occur in some parts, it provides no explanation of the phenomenon that attaches the stream on the shape. Arguing with the streamline constriction through a fluid displacement by the shape doesn't work because in reality the stream is bended in a wide range around the profile. Instead of being constricted like in a tube system. Bernoulli's principles work well on, on a tube system, but less for a free stream. Only very laminar conditions can be modeled close enough to provide sufficient results. All other conditions can be solved without the use of numerical computer models. And finally, the biggest problem at the end is that the resulting lift force becomes zero. Because the potential theory, where Bernoulli's principle is based on, state that under idle conditions, fluids flow around bodies with no resistance, leaving the fluid in its original state to fulfill the energy conservation law. This picture, for example, shows how streamlines would look like using the potential model based on Bernoulli. Because lift doesn't occur in a translational potential, Kutta and Zhukovsky introduced the rotating potential field. The Magnus effect on rotating objects work quite similar. 
The rotating field though only exists in an overcritical state of the potential theory when vortices occur at the trailing edge of a profile. It is further a highly idealized model describing lift with static fields. We will have a closer look on such rotating phenomena around wings in later chapters to get a deeper understanding on the correlations. In some CFD simulation it also really looks like the stream would rotate around a wing. So how then can the lift phenomenon be described realistically with no simplifications? At the end a momentum change has to happen on the air to gain lift as the opposing force. That is what Newton based theory state. Arguing with the bottom side alone is, can be easily comprehended, but two thirds of the lift is provided by the upper side. But there comes the question, what glues the particles on the surface so they follow the contour? Magic magnets? Molecular forces? Usually repelling on objects can produce impulse change, but not escaping surfaces do. They would rather leave an empty space in between. At that point, still many questions about lift are left unanswered with the Newton-based theory. Why? It explains only the final result and stall is not explained. Flow attachment on the upper side is also not included. So we need an answer where the two-thirds of the lift provided by the upper side is coming from. This is still not sufficient. But what then holds planes in the air and how the air follows a wing contour? Let's have some further inspections. Here again a picture of an attached flow. You can see that the air is displaced downwards behind the wing's trailing edge. But this is only at in condition in flight mode at very low angle attack and quite ideal condition. The more the angle rises, the more the state becomes unstable. In contradiction to that, here a wing with an entirely detached flow. Numerous vortices are created in the wind shadow, pushing the free stream away. So the wing can no longer attach the air on its surface. In total, no lift is created. Practically, such situations are very dangerous for modern airplanes and must pre be prevented by all means. Now we have seen that the air attaches on smooth surfaces and tend to follow its contour at low angles of attack. If the angle gets steeper, attachments no longer work. Instead, it detaches by creating turbulence. One thing to note, this phenomenon is also speed dependent. The, fast, the slower we get, the faster flow separation occurs. In the next chapter we will get to the bottom of all those questions, providing a solution why lift and stall occurs. That will lead us to a working lift theory, including all known effects. That's so far for this chapter. I hope you liked it. See you in the next chapter.